Good evening, I'm Fran Santos. Welcome to Hypophosphatemic TV, the one and only channel where you can get the full scoop on all things hypophosphatemic. This season, we have been discussing DNA, cellular replication, and the different diseases and conditions that can happen during my mitosis and meiosis. During today's show, we will be discussing a specific genetic disorder called X-linked hypophosphatemic rickets, or vitamin D-resistant rickets, for those of us too lazy to say hypophosphatemic. <laughs> Basically, this condition is a sex-linked dominant condition that is quite common in children. It is a disorder of bone mineralization that results in bowed legs due to a lack of vitamin D in their system. The rick of rickets comes from an old English word that means to twist, which will be useful in the future of today's episode. The condition is the most common type of hereditary hypophosphatemia, affecting both sexes equally. The chance of actually being affected by this disease, however, are about 1 in 20,000. In terms of human health, XLH is not deadly, but can result in major physical deformation and an exponentially increased risk of physical injury. Those with XLH usually exhibit various and often obvious symptoms and signs that point to the genetic condition. Mild to severe deformities in tooth and bone development are common, but the symptom that differs XLH from regular rickets is the resistance to traditional amounts of vitamin D as a treatment for the condition. However, there is a broad variety of symptoms that an individual with XLH might experience, from a short stature, to muscle and bone pain, to a waddling gait. Although the condition is not deadly, and can be treated, it is one that is extremely painful and difficult, and cannot be presently completely cured. The way the condition affects protein structure is actually pretty simple. Phosphorus is needed to make and maintain our bones and teeth. XLH is exhibited in the X chromosome, or more specifically in the FEX gene, a phosphate regulating gene. When this gene contains the XLH mutation, it is essentially deactivated. And when it is deactivated, a protein in our bodies called FGF23 increases, so that our kidneys are unable to detect phosphate as a necessity and label it as waste. This causes our body to waste the phosphate that is needed in our bloodstream to make our bones grow. This disease can be inherited in different ways, depending on whether it is the mother or father that is affected by the condition. If it is the father that is affected by the condition, then the chances of his offspring having XLH will be reflected in a Punnett square. Since men only pass on their X chromosome into a sperm cell when the offspring is a girl, there is no chance for a male offspring to be born with this condition if the father is affected. On the other hand, if the offspring is a girl, there is a 100% chance that she will be born with X-linked hypophosphatemic rickets, seeing as she will always have her father's X chromosome. If it is the mother that is affected by this condition, then the chances of her offspring having XLH is a 50% chance, whether the offspring is a boy or a girl. This is because women have two X chromosomes that they always give out, whether their child is male or female. There is a 50% chance that the X chromosome in her egg is healthy and there is also a 50% chance that it contains the XLH mutation. The mode of inheritance relates to meiosis and fertilization because it is during these processes that the possible genotypes from both parents collide, identifying the sex of the baby, thus determining whether XLH will be present or not. For example, let's say that it is the father that is affected by XLH. During meiosis, and only when creating a daughter, Dad's chromosome pair number 21 will transfer its X into a sperm cell. The sperm cell will be combined with an egg in a process called fertilization. It is during this process that sperm and egg collide and a baby begins to be created. In this baby girl's chromosome pair number 21, there will be two X chromosomes that make her a female. One of these X chromosomes will contain the XLH mutation in the FEX gene so that phosphate cannot be regulated due to the increase of the protein FGF23 in the body. It is important to understand this example because it leads to the conclusion that when the father of a child is affected with XLH, only if the baby is a female will he or she be affected by the XLH mutation. 
On the other hand, let's say that the mother is affected by XOH. During meiosis, mom's chromosome, pair number 21, will transfer its X into an egg. The egg will combine with the sperm cell containing the X or Y chromosome, and the baby begins to be created. However, when this happens, it is imperative to conclude that this time, there is a 50% chance that the baby will be affected by vitamin D resistant rickets. This is because the mother, who is affected by XLH in this case, contains two X chromosomes in her 21st pair. Therefore, there is a 50-50 chance that her egg will contain the X chromosome with XLH, as there is a 50-50 chance that her egg will contain a normal X chromosome, and her son or daughter will be healthy at birth. Now, you may be thinking, as a high schooler, why is this information important for me to know? The truth is, this information could be incredibly useful to anyone planning to have a child, as it could greatly sway decisions and raise awareness on how genetics can improve people's health and everyday life. Science is an incredibly useful thing, because it is all around us. If we can understand and learn from it, then we can create a brighter and better future for us and our children. I genuinely hope that you've understood how a genetic disorder is something that is vital and often deadly but it is also something that can be understood and dominated with time and research. Thank you so much for watching.